Hi, Amanda Armstrong. Welcome to the back office. You can see the picture is a little bit more, a bit wider than usual. And that's because I'm using the lens I normally keep on my trusty old GF3 here. And that's because I wanted to show you a little bit about my setup here and something that I've just made. So just a little diagram. Let's start with a diagram. If you imagine this is the bench that I'm now sitting at and I'm kind of sitting like this, looking down. There we are. Can't zoom in though, so you're gonna have to use either manual zoom or your, just bear with me. And uh, there's a shelf above me. And on that shelf, I have a camera pointing down. And the camera I have pointing down is a GH3 with um, ooh, this actual lens here, this little lens here. And this is my GH4, and I normally have this lens on that one. So I, I use this same sort of spec lens, but the sort of plastic body one made in China, not the metal one made in Japan. And so I have that pointing down, and I have a system of wires and cantilevers and brackets that I've sort of bolted on, bits of metal work, old tripods, all sorts of stuff to just get this hanging off there, just so that you can see my hands. And uh, normally I just can twist the zoom on the lens. And that uh, is how I zoom in and out. And that's it. That's why it wobbles around a bit because it's all a bit on a wall. Oh, it doesn't wobble so much without that lens on it because it's a much lighter pancake lens. I decided I'm going to learn some CAD. So I loaded up this software, I think free CAD. And I designed this, which is, is kind of a bracket. And the idea of this bracket is that it bolts on underneath the shelf. So if this is a shelf profile here, it really just sort of screws on underneath just like that. And these sorts of forks hold the camera. The camera can just sit on top. Now, the reason I wanted to do this is that I can then use the cameras. I mean, these are a lot of camera to be have permanently bolted and not be able to sort of take them off without messing around. So that's the idea. That's, that was the first print. And you can see these are a bunch of mounting holes. So regardless of your sort of shape of your shelf, you should find some holes that can uh, work. This was a very low res print. And you can see I already tried a, a screw in there. And that actually worked pretty darn good, to be honest with you. Um, but you can see it broke there. And the reason it broke is because when the camera's in it, see it's splaying there? I didn't measure it up quite right. So that was no good. That was no good at all. And then something I actually haven't factored in at all is this lens. So it, this will never work on this lens, but that's fine. I never intend it to. So anybody who's gonna copy this from my, uh, wherever I paste this on GitHub or Thingiverse will have to bear in mind they need uh, this this variant of the lens, which is a slightly smaller body one. So that uh, that was great. So then what I did is I went onto the CAD package and I refined the design. So this one is in green and that's the main feature that's different. Not really. It's actually slightly wider. There you go. And um, I, I closed the end because there was no need to sort of be able to slide the camera in from the end like this. It really, it, it's, it's unnecessary. So with this one, I can actually just drop it in. So if this is, this will be this way, permanently screwed into the sort of counter. And then every time I just want to sort of record something with my hands, I can just throw the camera in, look, locked in. It's locked in like that, pretty darn good. So, I'm just going to finish this off right now then. So the thing I thought we needed is a bit of foam because there's nothing uh, quite like slinging down a sort of thousand pounds, 1200 pounds, whatever it is, bot worth of body into a rough plastic fitting. But I thought it'd be nice to have some sort of foam here so that when this moves in, you can see it's rubbing on this face and this face. It'll just be, it'll just be nice. It'll keep it snug. So what you can get is this sort of foam tape. It's just literally foam and tape and they actually do variants in sort of hardware shops or home base or whatever just for sort of going around your window frame and I'm just going to place it around here right now actually and these big holes at the front you're probably wondering what they're for they're actually for if you want to sort of have a cantilever going on so if you found you hook this up and your, your camera sort of wobbling around you can actually just get some wire or something and just sort of hang that off some hooks just to give it a bit of strength and then that will stop it wobbling around. So there, it's, it's totally, it's a totally practical subject, by the way, if you're uh, ever interested in uh, 
playing with cameras. If you're just into doing sort of making videos, then yeah, learn about that side of things. But if you're uh, anyway interested in the sort of hardware elements, yeah, cameras are great. Cameras and lenses, it's all just basic physics stuff. I say basic, basic as if I know what it is, but it's light getting to a camera through a lens. So you can fiddle with that. Buying old, old camera bodies and things like that, old camera lenses. So I'm just gonna apply that there. So be careful when you apply foam tape because you, you have the tendency that you can actually stretch it out as much as you like. It will stretch as far as you pull it really, but you don't want that because you want to maintain its foaminess. Look at that, that's a good old foamy layer. So this is sort of me getting back into 3D printing. And that's also the uh, the thing that sort of sort of creativity that sort of came from it because I downloaded that CAD package I've sort of never used and sort of decided, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna spend a few minutes and learn it. And uh, once I did, it was very easy just to sort of roll with it and continue. And I think what 3D printing gives you is the option to fail because it doesn't really cost you anything. And you can sort of go through making your sort of prototypes like this. But it's actually pretty quick print. You know, it like, looks like a big lump, but it's it's mainly hollow. So you do a quick print, test it all out. Once you're happy with the design, you know, up the quality like this one, and it's it's super. This is like medium quality, and it's not massively dense. You can see it's got honeycomb construction, but it's far um, in excess on what this sort of camera will need to hold it up. So you you know really can make something usable at the end of the day. It's not just now I'm going to sort of say this with the kind in the kindest possible way, Christmas cracker um, sort of junk that most people you know associate 3D printing with because that's always what you see. It's the sort of stuff people sort of download off Thingiverse, and it, it has that tendency to look like it because it's always a bit rough, really kind of plasticky, and that it's always it's just like a trinket or a you know. A, something you just leave on the corner of your desk and then go, oh, that's 3D printed, as if nobody could tell that was 3D printed, because how else could you make something so rough? <laughs> but we've always used 3D printers for actual practical things, so actually making test rigs and enclosures and stuff like that that may may well go on and then be actually formally manufactured, so that's actually, as, as a prototyping tool, that's really where it comes into its own. Okay. And I'm sure there are going to be companies, TV companies and toy companies who just are aching to get into the whole 3D printing thing to start selling you sort of kits to pre 3D print your own characters. Right, just sort of just the foam now. Yeah, that's quite good. It just sits there, locked, locked into place. I think that's it's going to be quite pretty rigid, really. It's all just going to be as rigid as your shelf. I feel I feel that I need to put though a little bit of foam on this edge now, just just to sort of finish that off, because when the uh, camera's in there, the top of this sort of flash housing can can touch that. Whereas elsewhere, elsewhere it's all sitting entirely on the actual foam. So just one bit of foam in there, and I'm done with that. You can screw that on. I'm finished. So if you want a 3D printer, there's never been a better time really to buy one. The, but what I would suggest you look at is the Formlabs SLA printing. That so instead of using light, uh, sorry, instead of using sort of glue gun technology to print, you know, where they're basically extruding, extruding lines of plastic. Look at the Formlab ones where they're using light and a resin. So it sort of shines the light, makes a pattern. The resin goes hard and then it just sort of slowly lifts lifts your object out of a pool of resin. Which is kind of very Terminator, isn't it? T1000 style. But the uh, benefits of that are it's a really good print. I mean, I think they're going to be quite expensive a print because resin and things like that aren't cheap. But if you're going to invest in the machine, I think that's the machine you're going to invest in because I think it's probably around £1,500, maybe a bit more. But it's the, it's going to actually get, give you some sort of practical stuff that you can make out of that. If you you, you know you can buy a lot of 200, 300 pounds 3D printers if if you you know and uh, end up dissatisfied. So it really depends. If you're gonna if you're gonna go sort of balls to the wall into 3D printing, 
make sure you uh, just save the money up and get a good machine than rushing into it and being very disappointed. The disappointment will either manifest itself in two ways. You'll either be totally disillusioned with making things as a hobby, and 3D printing stuff, which is not what you want, or you'll just end up buying a more expensive machine and Im almost immediately after. <laughs> so if you buy the wrong one, you're going to buy twice. So that's it in essence my 3D printed bracket. So we've gone from this bit that's sort of a broken one to one that's going to be quite good and in my next video I'll have had this sort of fitted and we'll be just using that. Um, although I'm probably going to cut in right now some footage of it uh, working and you can see that uh, as predicted it's worked really well and you can see it hanging straight off there. The camera just drops straight in when you need it. And when you need to take the camera out, out it comes. You can see my dingly dangly homemade microphone, which is, you know, that's doing pretty well. I might just need to maybe think about integrating that mic into the stand and putting a clip on the side for the mic. So the mic's actually just really easy to just plug it in and it's all just part of the rig. With the, oh, you could put microphones, you know, exactly where you need them as well. Ooh, see, once you get the creative juices going, hard to stop them. Hope there's been of some use to you. Please comment down below, like and subscribe if you're that way inclined and as ever, thank you for watching. Just one observation, I'm actually using the bracket now which is awesome and it's super stable just to show you it doesn't you know I knock the camera it doesn't wobble around like it used to I printed a second one so I can G clamp this wherever I want which is brilliant so you know just G clamp it on any particular area but this GF3 I was sort of playing with this and then I sort of realized that uh, yeah GF3 also works really well so there you go have a go at making it I'm gonna post the information on how to do this on Thingiverse and I believe you can even get them to print it if you want or ask me maybe I'll uh, do a batch of these off and start flogging them on eBay, who knows?